Hello and welcome to the Fairy Little Podcast. I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little, and I want to say welcome everybody for joining me today. I've got not a ton, but I do have some knitting to show you and I also did some sewing. So today we're going to be talking about some knitting and some sewing. So let's get to it. I have no finished objects. Zero, zilch, none, nada, none. But I did cast on something. I've been going through all of my old designs and editing them for consistency and clarity. A lot of them are going to get schematics put in. They've all been sent for schematics to be put in. And any of them that have charts, everything's getting checked over and made sure that it's all ready for republication. So if you've purchased any of my designs through Ravelry, when the update happens, you will automatically receive whichever patterns you have gotten will be the new updated version. And if there were any ed errors, they will be corrected. They should have schematics and any additional little tidbits will be added as well. So those will automatically come to you. So you don't have to do anything. You'll receive an email with the link and then you just have to download it. Then you have the updated version. So that's what I'm working on. Things are coming along swimmingly. So I pulled out one of my designs. It's called the Pasquishall and it is coming along really well. There was an error that I found in the written pattern. So I'm re-knitting the whole thing just to double check everything because I really want to make sure that it's very clear and concise. The Pasqua shawl is a lace shawl. It is also a pie shawl. Both of those things I love very much and I'm enjoying knitting it. The yarn I've chosen is beautiful. So this is what the Pasqua shawl looks like. And I have a picture. Maybe I'll throw the picture and it might be easier to see. But this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's been on the chair, so it's kind of not blocked the way it should be because I've stretched it. It's all my fault. It's nothing to do with the pattern. The pattern's beautiful. But it's this beautiful lace shawl. The yarn that I used for this one is Sweet Fiber, and I believe it's their denim colorway. I purchased it four years ago at Knit City, I believe. The little details, right? It's such a nice knit and I'm enjoying it immensely. So this is how far I have gotten on it. I cast it on last week. It's just at the point now where I can straight knit it and it's not all bunched up on the needles. So it's, it's written up as a three color shawl I had to do a lifeline because this is where I found the error was in this area. So I've corrected that. So that will be corrected in the pattern, the final draft. I did have to rip it back a few times to that point to like make sure everything lined up. The yarn I'm using is amazing squishiness. It is Black Cat Custom Yarns. So that's the tag. <laughs> it goes around the skein, the skein goes through there. So the dark color I'm using is called Widowmaker. This is on Workhorse Sock, which is 80% blue faced luster and 20% nylon. Beautiful, beautiful yarn to knit with. It's blue faced luster, so it would it's really good for sock yarn as well. But because of the wool content and I'm doing lace, it holds the it holds the stitches better when you block it. It keeps the lace open longer. It's it's going to be so scrumptious when it's done. I'm really excited about this. So that's the dark color on the very outside edge there is Widowmaker. Then the next one, no, the Widowmaker, sorry. The dark one is Void Talon, which is 80% SW Blue Faced Lester and 20% Nylon. 
I try to add enough yarn on there so I can tell the difference. So this one's the lighter one. And Widowmaker is the darker one. I believe they're so close. And the lightest one is called Black Raspberry Cheesecake. Those are the three colors and they pull colors from each other. They were all purchased separately, but they go together really well. And I can't remember if they came together or if they were in a section together, but they just look so beautiful together. This shawl can be knit in one skein or three skeins or even two skeins if you want. But it's just a really nice knit. I'm enjoying it. It I just I need to I need to get it done, obviously, because I'm republishing it. But I will be putting in more lifelines as I go because I know that I'm probably going to have to rip back in the next section like this. But I'm going to take a look at it first before I get there and see if I made the same error. And, and the only, the only thing is, is that I moved the stitch marker in the wrong direction. Uh, so I think that that's the only, the only issue. But that's the thing is I'm trying to make sure that all, everything is done really well and re-released. So everybody's happy with what they've gotten. So that's one thing I'm working on I'm enjoying a lot. The next thing I'm working on is my hoodie, which my testers are working on. The bag I'm using to house the hoodie is this lovely amazingness by Ginger Snap Yarns. I've shown, I believe I've shown this before. It's got a nice metal piece in it that holds it open. And it has a really cool inside. The bag on the outside says, uh, strength, magic, and beauty. Stand up for all women. Be your own hero. Just over and over, it's women power, which is my thing. So that's the bag if you're wondering. You're going to be complete by like the first, the end of the first week in February. That's the timeline. And it's coming along really, really nicely. I enjoy it so much. I've completed the pocket on the front. So that's done. It's still, there's another, there's another phase to the pocket. So you don't lose things. So right now, for me, it's just knitting in circles. So it's very potato chippy at this point. I just, I stopped a couple days ago because I need to measure it and my tape measure was down here. So here it is. After I'm done recording, I'm going to re-measure it and see how far I am and how much farther I need to go. The yarn I'm using on this is Remix Light, Barocco Remix Light. It's 100% recycled fiber which is something that's really important to me. It's a number three lightweight yarn. So it is like a heavy fingering weight or a light DK is what it is knit out of. I have testers who are knitting out of both DK and light DK and it seems to be working for them. So my suggestion would just be to make sure that you swatch so you're getting gauged so you don't end up with something that's way too big. Yeah, it's coming along very well. I do need to sit down and just get it done. But I'm really enjoying it. There's another top that I'm going to be casting on too, but I need to go and pick up some extra knitting needles. I have a lot being cast on. <laughs> a lot of design stuff. So last week I mentioned that I wanted to cast on something that wasn't my design. So I did that. And I'm disappointed. I am very disappointed. 
I picked a pattern that is a sport uses sport weight yarn. It's a lace cardigan. It's very pretty. It seems to be very well written. All things that I really like. The one thing that I don't like is the whole thing is charted. So the sleeves are charted, but they're charted separately. The back is charted. The front panels are charted. So when you're doing one row, you have to look at like five different charts. Plus you have to go back to the pattern to figure out what you're doing with your first and your first stitches, your decreases and your last stitches. Like there's a lot going on and I just, I don't have the brain space for that right now. So now I need to find a new knit to work on. That isn't my pattern. I did, however, also cast on a sock that is my pattern because <laughs> I can't stop. It's coming along really well. It is a new design that I'm working on. I just, I came up with it and I messaged one of my friends who is also, uh, she designs quite a few socks. So I messaged her and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. Do you have any designs with this stitch pattern? Because I don't want anybody thinking that I'm copying anybody and out of everybody, like your patterns kind of go along this line more so than anybody else that I've seen. And she was amazing. And she said, I have not used that and it's all good. Design away. So that was really good. So I can't wait to share that with you. My fingerless mitt knittle like test knit is almost complete. And I've shown these in a couple different episodes. So they, I've named them. That's why I'm bringing them up today. I've named them. They are the Dream Fingerless Mittens. And they are going to be, they are going to be released, I think, probably next week. I'm going to aim for but I will probably release them before my next episode. So I just wanted to come on here and show you them. This yarn is a cashmere merino yarn. It is from Riverstone Yarns and it is the Rocky Mountain colorway. And they're so nice my testers are really happy with it the one thing that one note that i'm putting in there in the pattern is when you knit it just how long the thumb is you kind of need to measure that i didn't realize i have long thumbs but apparently i do and most of my knitters have had to cut the the length of stitches down because their thumbs aren't as long as mine. It's either that or their gauge isn't as tight as mine, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I think it's probably the thumb thing. But I also have, and a couple of people have shortened the length for the fingers as well. But one thing as well is I do have long nails. So they kind of poke out. And I think when I designed it, I was designing it so that the least amount of any of my fingers would show. They're really easy to knit. They're very straightforward. There's no increases for the thumb gusset. So that makes things very easy. You could, you could knit a bunch of these and not have to worry about counting thumb gusset stitches because of the cool design that I came up with that uses ribbing to add extra space, but to also serve as the elastic, creates an elastic thumb. So, so if you have a wider thumb, it stretches. And if you have a thinner thumb, it just sits there. <laughs> Same with the fingers. And it runs up the, the sleeve. So from the wrist it runs up so it actually takes up extra space in the wrist so the wrist doesn't have a lot of extra fabric as well yeah. 
just a cool design feature that I really love. Uh, through Ravelry is where they'll be available first. I was putting stuff on Love Knitting. Well, I put one pattern up on Love Knitting. I think though, for me, if I'm doing a multi-platform thing because it's there's just one of me putting things everywhere where they need to go well. I have somebody who helps me with my webpage, but <laughs> because it's just, there's so many steps for each different platform, I think I'm just going to limit it to my website and Ravelry for now. So if you don't use Ravelry, you can go over to my website and purchase the patterns there when my website is done. We're coming into the like the last last little bit. I'm sending up sending over write-ups for each pattern as well as updated PDFs. That's kind of why the PDF push is is on right now that I'm going over all of the other designs. Cuz because they'll be released on two different platforms platforms and I want to make sure they're consistent. There's something else that I have been working on. I made a costume for one of my girls and I'll post a picture here of that costume. She was doing a, a scene from Once, the TV series. It's one of her absolute favorite shows. She watches it over and over. She's read the fan fiction. She just enjoys it. She chose to be Regina from Once and do a scene. She needed a costume to go with that. So I made her a costume. It took me about an hour. I took two dresses, one top and a tablecloth, pieced it all together. I took the skirts off of two of the dresses. I flipped one of the skirts and I sewed the other skirt to the bottom. And I used that as a flat panel in the front. Then, I took the neckline from one of the dresses, the lace dress, and I sewed it to the collar that was already a large collar of the top to give it extra height. Then I took the tablecloth and I sewed that together with the two pieces of skirt and did a fold over I inserted a piece of elastic through the whole thing and stitched that down. Then I took the ribbons that were attached to one of the dresses that were the tie down. I sewed those together in the middle and then I sewed them down through the center. I did a gather and I sewed them down to the center of the front of the skirt part of the dress and boom, it was done. I was very, very happy with it. I posted it on Instagram. And when she saw it, she was so pleased. She could not stop smiling. The same day, I pulled out some fabrics that I bought that were already pre-cut into squares and I started sewing them together. So I'm also sewing together a quilt top. Right now, I just have like two squares together for a lot of squares. I haven't. That's as far as I got and then I had to go and do life stuff. And I actually ended up taking the weekend off because I've just been working so much and I needed some work-life balance to happen. So I took the weekend off, which was a lot of fun. I ended up going snowshoeing, which was very fun. This is the fabric that I have been using. I got some jelly rolls, which are rolls of fabric that are like two and a half inch. I got squares that were pre-cut and I got these fat quarter sections. So there's dark gray, there's light gray, there's the light gray. So dark gray there, light gray there, it's a cream color there, there's a white there, and then there's a light pink. And all of the fabrics have the same patterns through them. I think there's four different or five different styles of fabric, but they're all consistent throughout every single one of the fabrics. They're so pretty. This is, I purchased this at Cherry, Cherry Tree Quilts here locally, and it's the F, FE Bundle 32 piece modern BG. I don't know what that, that means, but 
So these are all pre-cut. And I was thinking that with these, I would do some cushion covers for cushion covers and pillowcases for my bed. So they, they kind of match it up. And I'm really excited about this. I haven't quilted in a long time. It's something I do enjoy doing. I've made quilts before. I, I have made patchwork quilts, but I've also made, um, they're called log cabin quilts where you have a red square in the middle because that's the heart of the home is the fireplace and then and then you build up around it. I've made quite a, f quite a few. I sound like I do this all the time. I've made four. I've made four. <laughs> and they're really pretty and I enjoy them. I enjoy quilting. I enjoy the process. I've hand quilted. Af like after the top is done, I've done hand quilting, which... I enjoy that it dials things back, but I don't enjoy that it takes so long to do. So that's not happening with this. I'm actually going to send it. To, I'm actually going to send it to somebody who does long arm quilting and have them do the quilting down and then I'll finish the edge. I think that's it for all of the crafty knitting content. So if that's all you are here for, thanks for joining me. If you're interested in supporting the podcast, there's lots of links below with lots of different options. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that little bell as well. For the rest of you who are here for the jibber jabber, let's get jibber jabbering. I went snowshoeing. I've been thinking about going snowshoeing all winter. Even last winter, I wanted to go snowshoeing, but I didn't. I kept putting it off. I, we went sledding on hills and skiing, cross-country skiing, hiking. We did a lot of different things and it was a lot of fun, but I wanted to go snowshoeing as well. So I purchased some snowshoes this year and I went out and had a really great time. I was out there for like, for like three hours, I think. I went out with a friend and we just trekked in the the trails it, it was so much fun to get outside and social distance but get fresh air and do something just for myself it was really it was really good that was fun i've also we've been watching full house as a family because why not <laughs> And I actually, Bridgerton has been coming up as an option for me to watch for a while. And I've decided that I'm going to start watching that as well. I really like period dramas and period shows. So I think that that one will, it looks like a me kind of show. So I'm, I'm hopefully optimistic that it's going to be good. What else have we been up to? Oh my goodness. I'm going to give you a quick little update on my dad. Nothing has changed since the last episode. He's still in the hospital. He's still isolated. But he still doesn't have COVID. So things are okay. That That's okay. Everything's good there. Our snow here has melted a lot. And we have actually been seeing blue skies. Which is so nice. It makes such a big difference to to everybody's moods are so much better. People are smiling at each other as they drive by in their vehicles. You can't see people smiling when you're face to face <laughs> with the mask on. Last week, I took my one of my girls for her formal assessment. And I'm not going to talk about that part because that's that's her, her stuff. But when I was talking to the doctor, she asked me if I've had a formal assessment myself <laughs> within five minutes of talking to me. And I said, no, I have not. So I'm, I'm going to go and do the formal assessment for Asperger's autism. Uh, I'm just going to talk about that for a second because in North America, we don't use the term Asperger's anymore. It left the DSM a little while ago and there's, there's various reasons why that term left 
the DSM, but a lot of the literature still uses the term Asperger's and North America is the only area that doesn't use the term Asperger's. The rest of the world still does. This is explained to me by the doctor. <laughs> she described that the need to use the term Asperger's instead of just autism in the diagnosis process because of how they relate to where people are on the spectrum because Asperger's is very high IQ, retains a lot of information, um, some facial recognition issues. Like there's, it's a spectrum, right? And what is known as autism generally is, can be, like a lower IQ, lower functioning, lower social skills. So it, because it's a spectrum and then normal's kind of like one's on one side, one's on the other, and then normal's kind of in the middle, but it's not like that at all at the same time. <laughs> so with the diagnosis, it's, she definitely uses the term Asperger's. So that is, that's interesting because I've read a lot of books in the last couple of years about autism and Asperger's and, and the term Asperger's can be controversial in certain areas. So it's just kind of understanding your own diagnosis, I guess. <laughs> so I think I'm going to be going ahead and getting that diagnosis done. So I have formal diagnosis on paper. I think that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I know that jibber jabber area was that jibber jabber portion was a little bit short, but you know what? Not a lot's going on. I'm just, we're just doing life and enjoying it as we go, taking one day at a time. And I hope you're doing the same. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a great day and a great week. And I hope that your knitting adventures take you somewhere spectacular. And like I said last week, if you're struggling, cast something new on because that's just what we need to do right now. <laughs> so until next time.